this is the question I would, this is another question I always ask Christians. Is the resurrection of Jesus of Nazareth, is it a historical fact? Yes. Yes or no? Yes. It's not a historical fact? It is. Okay, name me any historian, except from, um, actually, even Josephus. Did Josephus say the resurrection happened? No, he just says the crucifixion happened. Aha, aha, I got you. No, you haven't, but carry on. Did Josephus the say fact. the resurrection happened? Yes or no? No. Exactly, that proves my point. What does that even, prove? Even it Josephus, proves... even Josephus said no. the resurrection didn't happen. It doesn't prove, even it doesn't Josephus prove anything. Even Josephus didn't say the resurrection, let no. me. What does and Josephus, I'm not a historian, I'm just Jose, a normal... what does, do, but let's, let's be clear about what Josephus does say because I, I have it. No, no, hold on. I just answered you the question. You've, you just no, answered my question. You no, said Josephus said. Let's, let's just have a look at what Je Josephus says, No, Josephus we? didn't talk about the resurrection. Let's just have a look at what Josephus says. He didn't talk about the resurrection. <laughs> he talked let's about the other man. Let's just have a look. Right. There was a man so called Josephus. So Josephus was writing in 37 to 120 AD. And in his book, Antiquities, book 18, chapter 3, part 3. Yes. And I'm just going to give you a summary of how what he talks about. He talks about Christ yes. as being a performer of miracles. Yes. Do you believe Christ performed miracles? No, I'm an atheist. Okay, so, so the historian Josephus is saying Christ performed miracles. Right. Josephus says Christ was a teacher. Do you believe Christ was a teacher? Just, sorry, I just, I just got to say one quick thing. Sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt you. Maybe he was a magician. Okay, we'll, we'll come to that. Ah. We'll come to that. We'll come to that. So Josephus says Christ was a miracle worker that Christ was a teacher, that Christ had Jewish and Gentile followers, that, that Christ was called Christ, as in the Messiah, that he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. In your opinion. That he was, thank you very much. <laughs> my, my heckler, he's been heckling me all day. He's been heckling me all day. So uh, that was actually quite funny. <laughs> On that occasion, it was funny. Okay, so he, he, he is acute. <coughs> Josephus says that the leading Jews stoned James, and that the leading Jews accused the Christians of being breakers of the law. Now, listen carefully. If we compare these points made by Josephus to what we find in the New Testament, we find clear dovetailing between the two accounts. Oh, can I just say this? They dovetail well. So the New Testament is my evidence of Christ's resurrection and the New Testament is historical evidence. Okay. Like you... Josephus. Basically, you, you answered my question. I asked you very simply, does, did Josephus mention the resurrection of Jesus? And I've just said no. You said no. Yeah. So that proves my whole point. What so does it, it doesn't prove? matter what you say. I, well, you've what? just answered my question. Why do you think that Josephus not mentioning the resurrection yeah, proves your point? Explain to me the logic. Because if I the resurrection happened, this would be one of the greatest things ever to happen in history. It is accounted for in the New Testament. Would, wouldn't Josephus have mentioned it, that Jesus rose from the dead? Not wouldn't if he, he didn't believe it? it. That's madness. Not if wouldn't he didn't it? believe it. What? Not if he didn't believe it. Yeah, but if it happened, if it was a historical fact, you believe 100% the resurrection happened, yes? Yes. So why wouldn't Josephus mention it? It doesn't make sense. Well, because what we what we find in Josephus, Josephus's writing, he's, he's talking about Christ as a historical figure. Yes, he describes but he's not talking him, about him being the son of God. But if, if your logic and is God that, at the same time. Well, firstly, let, let's just be clear that the an argument from silence doesn't work. You, you are aware of that logical... Oh, you've answered my question many times. You, you, are you aware that an argument from silence does not work? Logically, no, no. philosophically, an argument from silence doesn't work. I'll explain to you this way. No, no, no. It's a, it's a logical fallacy to make an argument from silence. Yes, I understand what you're saying. Yes, okay. you're, right, you're You right. can't make an argument from silence. But that's not really the point. No, but it is the point because yeah. you're making the point that Josephus is silent about the resurrection as if it proves something. It yeah. proves nothing. All it proves is that he doesn't talk about it. What he does talk yeah, about, though... why he's not talking about what it. He he does, what he does talk about, though, is he says that Christ is a miracle worker, a teacher, had Jewish and Gentile followers, was called Christ, and was crucified under Pontius Pilate. Now, let me ask you this question. Yes. You're making a big deal about Josephus' silence. Josephus no. says Christ performed miracles. That's Do you believe Christ performed miracles? No, I don't believe he did. So, I... you're selectively using Josephus, then? Let me just explain to you this way. Okay. Sorry, because you, you might be you might not understand what I'm trying to say here. I'm not just looking at it from Josephus' perspective. I'm talking I'm talking about in, in complete general if you speak to most historians looking at that time. Yeah. Looking into the time of the life of Jesus, all those years ago. Yeah. There's very I don't think you can find a single historian who's gonna say hundred percent that the resurrection happened. That hundred percent Jesus is God, the Son of God, God at the same time, Holy Trinity, he's number one, he's the perfect man, he's an absolute genius. No historian is going to say that. Well actually and historians even... historians like Doctor Doctor um, Mike Lacona, for example. He's a historian. 
and he would say that the, the he would agree with you historians don't talk in terms of absolute facts they talk in terms of probabilities and most likelihoods the, the best way That's, to look no, at it, hold no, on one second sorry. that is how historians work right they 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 take together the collective evidence and then they find what is called the hypothesis with explanatory power or explanatory scope. Yes. That's how historical inquiry works. Okay. And Dr. David Lycona, who is an historian, yes. makes arguments for the resurrection all the time. So your argument that no historian is wrong because I've just named a historian. Okay, I'll explain to you this way. Dr. He, Bruce Metzger, he's another one. Okay, okay, you just named two. Okay. Dr. Daniel Wallace, there's a third. Okay, the point is... Dr. James White, that's a fourth. The point is, as a Christian, you are obviously going to say that the resurrection happened. Of course you are. And you're obviously going to say it doesn't because you're an atheist. That's, that's, Why are your presuppositions more acceptable than my presuppositions? Yeah, but what makes more sense? Someone died on the cross, they died. Or someone died on the cross and after three days they rose up again. What makes more sense? He died on the cross, case closed. If there is or does he die on the cross after three days he rose well, again? Well, firstly, I, 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 I'm glad that we're speaking to someone who's not bothering to deny the crucifixion. Yes. Okay, so... I'm not... I'm, but I just want to say sorry. No, let me let me address that point. You, you've asked the question about which makes more sense. Yes. So let me ask you this... Let, let, I, I will answer that question. If there was no God... Yes. Then it would make sense to say that Christ died and that was the end of the matter. Yes. If there is a God... Which I don't believe. And I'm God atheist. and God prophesies that Christ would be crucified and resurrected. Yes. Yeah. Which, uh, which it, we believe is in the Old Testament. Okay. I, yeah. I, 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 I'm, One I'm second. Not into the New Testament. Okay. I'm not into yeah. the Old Testament. Well, the Old Testament prophesies about the Messiah. The whole point of the Old Testament is it's talking about the Messiah. Are you aware of that fact? Well, haven't the Jews rejected Jesus? Are you aware? that the Old Testament... Yeah, and the Old Testament is the Hebrew is, Bible, yes, yes? that he's talking about the Messiah as a coming figure. Yeah, but they're not are you aware Jesus, of that? They're not talking about Jesus specifically. Are, not, uh, is the word Jesus actually mentioned? No, it doesn't, it doesn't name is the, Jesus. Is Jesus mentioned in the Old Testament? Exactly. Okay. I so, I, 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 so the thing that I'm pointing out to you... There is no mention of Jesus in the Old Testament. The thing that I am pointing out to you... Open, shut case. Well, I'm sorry, but you're case wrong closed. again. No, you're not. I just you're asked wrong you. Again. I just asked you. You're wrong. No, you can, assert, you, you can the, assert as much as you want. I'm going to make this point now. I'm going to make this point now. Okay? You can assert as much as you want. There's no mention of Jesus right? in the Old Testament. Actually, actually, let, let us let us it just look at this. It doesn't even say his name. Does he say Jesus? It talks about the Messiah. So let's that give an example. Anyone. That could be me. Let's, yeah, well, okay, so this has to happen to you then. <laughs> this has to happen to you. My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Far from my deliverance are the words of my groaning. Oh my God, I cry by day, but you do not answer. And by night, but I have no rest, yet you are holy. O you who are enthroned upon the praises of Israel, in your fathers trusted, they trusted and you delivered them. To you they cried out and were delivered. In you they trusted were, and were not disappointed. But I am a worm and not a man, a reproach of men and despised by the people. All who see me sneer at me. They separate with their lips. They wag their heads saying, commit yourself to the Lord. Let him deliver you. Let him rescue you because he delights in him. Yet you are he who brought me forth from the womb. You made me trust when upon my mother's breasts, upon you I was cast from birth. You have been my God from my mother's womb. Be not far from me for trouble is near, for there is none to help. Many bulls have surrounded me, strong bulls of Bashan have encircled me. They open wide my mouth, at, they open wide their mouth at me as ravening and roaring lion. I am poured out like water and all my bones are out of joint. My heart is like wax, it is melted within me. My strength is dried up like a potsherd and my tongue cleaves to my jaws and you have laid me in the dust of death. The dogs have surrounded me, a band of evil dovers have encompassed me. They pierced my hands and my feet. Now, what happened to Jesus Christ? In the case of the crucifixion, you're talking about the crucifixion? Yes. Well, according to, well, apparently, yeah, the whole, he what was happened? hanged. He was hanged, wasn't he? He was what? Hanged on the he cross? He was pierced, hands and feet. He was nailed to a cross. Yes. Right. This psalm was written centuries before Christ ever lived. Now. It still doesn't prove the resurrection happened. One second, one second. Oh. Right? Oh. So yeah. it says in the psalm that, that the Messiah 
will be pierced, will be crucified. Yeah, but he might not be the true Messiah. 